Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today we get to talk about one that's a little bit more conceptual and a lot less technical in the secure score recommendations and that one is the use least privilege administrative roles. Now as you can see you know in this particular tenant we haven't met that one because there's only a handful of users and we're global administrators um, but this is going to be very applicable in an enterprise environment where you have specific teams that are meant to do specific things so you know the knee-jerk reaction is always to give everybody global admin, um, but that is a very, very bad practice. On the Azure resource side, they like to give people owner or contributor by default over subscriptions, and again, way too many permissions for what most people need to do day to day. On the Azure AD side, you know, it's mostly gonna be for your exchange administrators, your teams administrators, your SharePoint administrators. Um, if you have a help desk team, perhaps the Intune, you're gonna need to grant some help desk administration roles. If you're using self-service password reset, you may need to grant some delegated permissions for authentication methods so that people can reset them. But what you're really looking for with this is to reduce the amount of global administrators and to reduce the amount of owners and contributors in your Azure resource. So, you know, this isn't something that is hard to meet if you're setting up a new tenant, you just, you know, delegate permissions and try and use the least privileged roles. Don't assign global admin by default, but if you're inheriting an environment where there's you know, perhaps you know, 30, 40 global admins, maybe there's a bunch of people that are owners over subscriptions, uh, maybe too many people have contributor access, you're definitely gonna wanna run through and do an audit of that. Um, and you know, break out all the permissions on a spreadsheet. You can do that programmatically with PowerShell to just extract everything out of Microsoft 365 and give you a big spreadsheet dump. And then you can go through and you can look at that, analyze it and say, okay, what does this person actually need? And come up with a game plan in order to be able to actually transition that. And if you're using you know, E5 or anything, you can also use privileged identity management. So you can make, you know, some of these roles, you can make them temporary. So maybe somebody you know, needs to be an exchange administrator all day, but then every once in a blue moon, they need to be a global administrator. With PIM, you can give them the option to elevate and you can set the specific criteria on that. So maybe you have them elevate for eight hours and they need a multi-factor authentication before they can become a global administrator. And that's just one step that you can take to kind of keep those permission sets down. So hopefully that made sense and it helped you kind of understand how to structure the permissions when you're you know, granting access to these resources in Azure Active Directory. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.